In today's high watt soundbite, we're managing song files and making backups. Well, I am very excited about today's session. This entire subject of file management, this is mission critical level kind of stuff. Unfortunately and sadly, so many times people don't treat it that way until they experience some sort of catastrophic failure in the studio. And believe me, I have experienced every one of them. I'm talking, I've erased things mistakenly. I've thrown an entire folder away. I've just, I've made every mistake that you can possibly make in the studio. You know that feeling? That feeling. You know what I'm talking about, where every ounce of blood drains from your face in half a second and your heart stops and you realize, oh my goodness, I just did it. I have experienced that so many times in the studio and it's not fun. Now, unfortunately, we probably are going to all experience one or two of those things, but my goal is that you don't have to, trust me. Well, the inspiration for today's session came from a phone call that I got earlier this week. A friend of mine called me in a real panic. You know, this is a new user, brand new composer, someone who's quite new to DAW, working in digital audio, all this stuff. Well, it didn't take very long to realize that she had broken rule number one, okay? She had been recording her song files to her hard drive on her laptop. And to compound the issue, she totally ran out of space and filled it right up to the max. Well, we did manage to straighten her out and everything's okay, but it totally inspired me to want to talk about file management. It made me realize if people are out there recording songs and audio files to the same computer that their their system is living on oh my goodness this needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed in a really big way so in today's session i'm going to share a couple of practices that i use that definitely allow me to sleep better at night knowing that things are backed up that when i go to look in a particular folder tomorrow or the next day or a 10 years from now that that the files that are supposed to be there are actually there so let's dig right into it okay rule number one we should never ever ever record our song files and our audio files to the same hard drive that our operating system is living on, ever. And I mean, not even a different partition on that drive. Now, I don't know if you can relate to this and I don't know what your experience is, but in my experience, when I get my operating system dialed in, and I'm talking, you know, hundreds of third-party plugins, tens and tens of audio programs that are all running on the same system, Sometimes it requires a lot of effort to get all of those programs talking to each other and, 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 and able to function on the same platform, right? On the same computer. Well, when I finally get everything dialed in, it's like I put a lockdown on that drive. Man, I want to just put a lid on it and just don't touch that hard drive for any reasons. Once you dial that thing in and get it locked in, you can just clone it to an external hard drive, and then just leave that thing alone. Now, while we're on the subject of external hard drives, I recommend that you, sure, you can pick yourself up something like this. I use it for copying files from one system to another. Really handy and really awesome device. Really not a great solution for your permanent audio, like external hard drive solution. You know, if you're gonna spend the hours and the energy that I know it takes to produce music, I don't want you recording stuff onto one of those kind of hard drives. You really should take the time to investigate and find yourself a really quality hard drive. There are no hard drive companies breaking down my door with endorsements, but honestly, I've purchased every single hard drive I've bought in the last probably 17 years from OWC. And as a Mac user, I just know where I can go buy my hard drive and I'll get a good quality product. They're already doing the homework. I don't have to think about which is the best interface and which is the best spinning disk and which is the best SSD. I can just go to a company like OWC and they've already figured it out. They've already done all the homework for me. So as part of today's session, I thought I'd just sort of walk through how I typically set up a session and how I go about making sure I have that session backed up. Now, by all means, this is not the way to do it. This is just a system that works for me. And, and you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about, about achieving the same goal, but just make sure that you're achieving it. In other words, make sure that you're, you're always tracking your audio and your song files to an external hard drive, always, and that you're always backing that stuff up in more than one place. Of course, that's one of the keys to backup is that you have to have two identical copies in two separate places. Then you've got a real backup. 
Okay, so let's go to Pro Tools. Let's create a brand new session. Let's go to 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, and then hit OK. Okay, now, next thing I do is where am I gonna put that? Well, I'm definitely not gonna put it on my desktop, right? Okay. File Management 101. Okay, and I'm gonna save that onto my SSD number two. Boom. And I'm gonna know that everything I record from this, from this point on in this session is gonna be properly inserted in the right place, okay? Okay, so how do I deal with backups? Well, there are so many different ways that you can go about backing your system up, but you know, there's third-party apps that'll like run in the background and update drives and oh my gosh, there's so many different ways. On my system, at any given time, I've typically got two or three uh, high-performance spinning hard drives that are just parked. They're not spinning. They're just connected to my system, but they're, they're unmounted. Typically, when I go to back up a session, like I'm ready to do right now, I just launch disk utility. I see that the drives are connected but not mounted. I'll just go audio A and B, and I'll hit mount. Only takes a couple of seconds, you know, long enough to have a sip of tea. Okay, so I've got my loud spinning discs mounted on my desktop because I can hear them. And uh, I know that I can just go ahead and open up my backup and I'll have a look at my working drive, my SSD drive that I work from every day. The session that I currently am working on, I'll just have a look at it and verify. Sure enough, I'm on my SSD and I last modified it today at 10.54 a.m. So I look to the backup drive and I see this very same session, but of course, Date modified is different. The date was a few days ago that I modified that. Well, very typically what I'll do is I'll select that session, I'll command delete, and I'll throw it in the trash. And then I'll take the updated version, the one that I last modified today, and I'll copy it right to the same location. As Soon as that copy is finished, now that I've got that session over there and I'm sure that it's the right session, in other words, the date modified matches the, the today, and I know it's current, then I go down to my trash and I'll go empty my trash and free up that space. And it literally is as simple as that. And then guess what? I just eject these off the desktop because I don't want to hear their spinning disks in there. So, so for any project where there's a work in progress, that's how I typically back up. It's multiple times a day. It's a very manual kind of process. It's like I have to actually think. I can't just toss stuff. And, you know, I personally love that feeling of like the checks and balances of doing all that myself. Some of you may prefer a more automated system. So at the end of every single project that I work on, whether it just be a single or an album or whatever the project is, what I typically do in Pro Tools, and you're going to have to look into your own DAW to see how your own DAW handles this. But in Pro Tools, I like to make an archived copy of a session. In Pro Tools under File, that's Save Copy In. It opens up this little sub-mini window here that you can make all kinds of selections on. You can say Items to Copy. I want all the audio files. I want the main playlist only. That can be really handy if I've got like six playlists behind this because I did a bunch of drum editing or something like that. You don't need all that crap, right? You just want the final mix. You want the final track. So main playlist only, right? selected tracks only. That's a really handy thing if you just wanted to back up like 10 tracks. Well, this save a copy as is gonna save you a lot of grief down the road. It's a very safe version of making a copy of a song because you know that you're copying all of the files that were associated with that song. So once I have that archive session and I've actually opened it and I know that everything functions properly, I'll go ahead and I'll make a backup in two locations. Once I've got that done, I can safely go back to my working hard drive and toss that session off there and make room for the next one. So I hope this inspires you to review your own file management system. Make multiple backups in different locations. Absolutely clone your system drive when that thing is rocking and, and running beautifully. Make a perfect clone of it. And absolutely never and I mean never, record audio and song files on your system drive. We want to be treating that operating system like the highly tuned Ferrari that it is. If that thing is ready to race, why would we want to mess with it? So get absolutely serious about file management. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session. And if you feel this session has value, please consider subscribing to my channel. And by all means, go ahead and share this session with a friend or colleague.